which has started. Cool. Um, so uh, thank you for coming on to this, the first of the uh, Leanza webinars. And I mean, it's um, something that we've wanted to uh, do for a while uh, as a way of sharing more information across the, um, the, the sector, because we're conscious of the fact that um, while things happen in certain areas, there's always the ability now with technology to do more than that. Um, just to note, um, what we've done at the moment is muted everybody, um, but what we'll do is we'll unmute people at the end uh, if there's any questions or, or conversation that people want to have at the end as well. It just stops everybody hearing movement and everything else that's going on um, at, at the end. Um, so, uh, around about January uh, of this year, uh, the National Library received an invitation from the, unexpectedly, from the Turkish government for um, some representatives from the National Library and a representative from the Library Association to um, come to Turkey to take part uh, in their 51st uh, Library Week. Um, and, that, I mean, that was uh, obviously a, a a lovely invitation to, to get, but you know, for both the association and for National Library, the, the general answer was, well, actually, um, we haven't planned on this, and so we don't actually have any budget for this, so thank you, but no thank you. Um, and almost immediately, the Turkish uh, came back and actually said, oh no, we will pay for that. So um, that's kind of the founding of what made this possible. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a wonderful act of generosity um, from the Turkish government uh, who were very keen to have uh, ANZAC uh, people involved uh, in the 51st Library Week, uh, especially with the commemoration of 100 years from Gallipoli at the same time. So um, I've got a slideshow which I'll run through and I'll talk to that, and that talk will talk a wee bit about our trip and the things we experienced and, and what that means uh, in terms of the libraries as well. Um, that uh, photo there is of the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. I, I spent a couple of days in Istanbul uh, on my own before the rest of the delegation arrived and that was a, a, a chance for me just to have a look around because I was determined if I was going to go that far, I wanted to at least see Istanbul. Um, so we weren't in Istanbul for any of the official uh, duties, but um, Istanbul was certainly a pretty amazing and, and crazy city. So hopefully, aha. So um, that's not the delegation, um, but it is, it is interesting the, uh, the characters that you come across uh, when you're wandering around in, in, in foreign cities. Um, and I couldn't resist having a photograph taken with them. So um, there's me and at least two of the dwarfs. I've got no idea which ones they are, but uh, yes, moving on. So this is the delegation. So um, the, what we have there is, um, so obviously I'm on the right um, and uh, standing beside me is Peter Murray. Now he's the Deputy Chief Executive of um, IKS, which is the part of uh, DIA that the National Library are in. Uh, and he um, was there really as the, uh, as, the um, as a high ranking figure who could actually uh, give undertakings and, and make engagements or anything that came in the trip in terms of conversation with the, uh, the Turkish government and, and dignitaries. Uh, beside him is Chris Sike, who um, some of you probably know. Um, so he's the uh, chief librarian of the Alexander Turnbull Library and the National Library. Uh, and um, the Turnbull has, uh, you know, the, the historical collection in the, in the National Library. It has a lot of content to do with uh, World War I, uh, diaries, etc. So um, he was there in, in that sort of capacity. Uh, and beside him is Dylan Owen, who actually works for Services to Schools, and and he um, attended uh, for the for a particular purpose, which was one he gave a bit of a, a talk on some of the stuff that Services to Schools were doing, but also about um, the fact uh, uh, that he was developing resources around World War One and Gallipoli for for New Zealand school children. And so it was an opportunity for him to actually get some first-hand uh, experience, take photographs, and also develop some thinking around content that he's he's developing. Um, and of course, I was there as the, the Leanza president. 
um, and uh, had that kind of uh, view. So I wasn't there with uh, primarily with my National Library hat on, I was there as, as the Lian's president. So as I said, it was the 51st uh, Library Week in Turkey. So they have one of these every year and they have different themes. And um, the theme for this one was actually around librarians or libraries and intercultural dialogue. Um, and it uh, was very much, uh, you know, sitting underneath that was uh, a layer of, of conflict and war. So uh, there was a lot of Turkish people there, obviously. Uh, also, uh, there were representatives uh, from uh, Palestine and also from Bosnia. So the, uh, the president of the Palestinian Library Association, Randa, was there. And uh, a gentleman called Ismet, who is the uh, national librarian of Bosnia-Herzegovina. So he, um, they were... They were there along with us taking part in this week and, and sharing. Um, you'll notice if you can see that map there that um, there are a number of things with the books and one of them is we, we noticed that you know there's this thing with the books which are over Australia and not over New Zealand and we had a bit of a uh, you know a question as to, as to why if we were there um, there wasn't that as well. When they put this together, this picture together, it was very much uh, around an ANZAC concept. And so that was placed there uh, with the view of potentially having Australian and New Zealand people there. Uh, as it came to pass, the Australians couldn't attend, so it was just the New Zealanders. Uh, and we very much took on the ANZAC uh, um, uh, profile, if you like, uh, as part of the week. So it was a week long um, and there was a conference uh, two-day mini conference at the start of the week and there was also a mini session at the end of the week at the National Library uh, of Turkey which is in Ankara which I'll talk about later and we took part in things throughout that whole week um, so it was obviously it was a wonderful uh, opportunity to be to be involved um, so the um, one of the things that very much struck us I mean Turkey uh, Turkish society uh, whilst being a very warm and welcoming society, also has a degree of formality about it. And so this is at the opening ceremony, and then this, this is the front row of the auditorium uh, with a, a sign which you can't quite see, which says protocol with a K rather than a C for protocol. And that basically means dignitaries. And so uh, Peter, uh, as our, our most senior uh, representative um, from the government, uh, was seated along there with some rather stern looking people as you can see. Um, the guy in the military uniform sitting right beside Peter looks like he's having an incredibly good time. Um, uh, two along from him, the gentleman uh, sitting beside the man with the white moustache, that's actually the governor of uh, Chinakali, which is where this conference was. And I'll talk a wee bit about Chinakali later. Uh, and he actually had visited New Zealand the week before and had visited the National Library here in Wellington uh, and had a bit of a tour around. So there was a nice um, symbiotic relationship almost between him visiting us and then the week later we were visiting his city and, and, and his region. Uh, the opening ceremony, there were a number of speeches. Uh, another thing with Turkish uh, dignitaries uh, is there is very much uh, a a process of people of seniority and speaking and having a turn to speak. And most of that, uh, a very interesting thing for us in that was that the book was at the center of most of the conversation coming out of the, the, the Turkish people who were involved around libraries. Um, and, and the book is very much seen as the center of Turkish libraries. No conversation at all really uh, while we were there around the other things that libraries are, the community meeting place, uh, the, uh, the the place that gives citizens uh, digital equality, those sorts of things, that just is not there in Turkish conversation at all. And I think uh, a large part of that is because the, uh, the Turkish government really control most of the publications and publishing in Turkic language. And uh, so they have a very defined environment which they work in, and so therefore the book still does have this thing for them. Uh, where, of course, we work in an environment, English-speaking world, where you've got many players like Amazon uh, and, and co who are, who are 
forcing and changing the model and also uh, you know causing libraries to reflect on you know how they get access to ebooks uh, if uh, society is moving in certain ways and the and and books aren't so reliable as a means of access what are the other things that we do how do how, what other roles do we play so that was quite an interesting thing for us which landed immediately uh, you know first day of the conference uh, and I think it's something interesting to reflect on in terms of the difference between the English speaking world and English publishing world and uh, and, and other parts of, of the world um, so there are a number of sessions. Uh, this is a, a panel which I took part on, so uh, that you can see me down the end there. Um, and this was a panel on the contribution of librarians in intercultural dialogue. Um, you'll see that slide which is up on the, uh, the wall behind me in that shot. Um, you can probably tell that's actually uh, Hobbiton. So I did take a, an opportunity during my presentation just to show some slides, um, not all hobbits, but you know, scenery and things to give people a sense of New Zealand as a country. Uh, this was kind of my last slide, which was kind of like, and here's the stereotype that most of the world kind of tunes into these days. Um, the, this, the panel discussion itself, I reflected on a number of things in terms of intercultural dialogue. I talked about the role that librarians and libraries play uh, when a country uh, seeks to understand the history of its people that have traveled to another country so and I and I use the Chinese miners as an example of you know where the Chinese government and the Chinese people uh, seek to understand the history of the the Chinese that came here uh, and that kind of piece of their history it's often the librarians in both countries that are brokering that conversation and are having that conversation and surfacing that information and uh, making it available. And that that was a really important role uh, in terms of the memory and history of, of, of countries. Uh, and you know, in that case, both the history of this country, but also the, 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 the history of China and, and Chinese. Um, I then also talked about my experience in Auckland when I was a community librarian and how uh, the librarian in a very diverse community is often uh, one of the, the, the people in the library is one of the places where many cultures will meet and uh, indeed the library often will serve a place where cultures will uh, come together, understand each other, share and indeed learn about the culture of the place that they have come to as well uh, and how important that is uh, that um, uh, new migrants often the public library will be one of the first places they come. Uh, both to get access to information, looking for jobs, but also to understand the community that they're in. And lastly, I talked about the relationship between Lianza and Toropa Fokaho and the partnership agreement and, and you know, how that's based and what that and, and the treaty principles and why we do that and how important that is in terms of, of dialogue uh, between uh, the associations and uh, and the way that New Zealand and New Zealand librarianship develops, recognising that bicultural element um, to New Zealand. Uh, one of the interesting things that happened during this panel discussion was there was a power cut. Uh, you may have seen in the news, uh, right across Turkey, all the big cities were plunged into darkness uh, on this particular day. We didn't have that context at the time. We were sitting in the auditorium. Uh, the lights went out. Uh, the gentleman second from the right, as you look at it, was presenting from a laptop and he kept on presenting with this eerie glow on his face. Uh, and it wasn't until much later that we found out that you know, there'd been a series of rolling um, uh, blackouts across, across Turkey and they, and they were trying to work that out. So that was a, it was interesting being all the way over there uh, with that you know, and uh, wondering what could possibly be causing uh, you know, Istanbul to plunge into darkness, Ankara to, pl to plunge into darkness. Um, and indeed, in many ways, all part of the, part of the experience. Um, this is Randa. Um, and one of the other key panels was one that Chris CK took part in, and this is the War and Cultural Heritage uh, panel. And so it was, this was interesting for us because we had Chris reflecting and talking on a war a hundred years ago and how that had impacted on New Zealand society and how they, uh, you know, that had helped create our culture and those things. Um, 
you had uh, Esmit from Bosnia who uh, was reflecting on uh, you know a relatively recent war and that struggle, that thing that he lived. Uh, and you know one of the interesting things there was an industry piece where they set fire to one of the libraries, and as people came to try and save things in the library, people were um, shot by snipers. You know, so this is this is very uh, fresh, upsetting uh, realities of what it means to be a librarian working in a war-ravaged uh, place. And then you had Randa, who, of course, is still living conflict. Uh, and, um, you know, she very much, uh, you could see that in, in, in her. Uh, and we talked over the, the few days that we were together about some of her experiences and what that was like. So that was, that was interesting for the Kiwi contingent because, of course, we come with a historical viewpoint. But here we were with two people who were actually living and experiencing uh, conflict. On, on a daily basis, or and or very recently, um, but a, a great a great cheering uh, experience and, and a wonderful thing to be uh, to take part in. Um, Chris CK took this photo. He's very very proud of the photo, and actually it's a, it's a it's a, a lovely shot. Um, this was in our van that we got ferried around uh, places in. So Chinakli, so Chinakli was where the uh, the first conference piece was. Um, so Chinakli is. Uh, um, right over on the western edge of, of Turkey. Uh, and uh, it's a city of about 150,000 people, give or take. Um, about a third of those are students. It's a university town. Uh, but it's also the main city that's right beside the Dardanelles and the Gallipoli Peninsula and, and where this conflict took place. So this was the major city in Turkey that was most at threat, if you like, when from the initial uh, Gallipoli uh, um, conflict. Um, lots of stuff you, you see in that photo there, that big image uh, in blue of, that's of a Turkish soldier carrying an Australian soldier based on uh, something that actually happened where a Turkish soldier actually picked up a dying Australian soldier, worked through no man, walked through no man's land and delivered them to the uh, Anzac Trench. Um, uh, you'll see the Turkish flag there, Turkish flags everywhere. Uh, and um, very patriotic. And also, because of what the, the anniversary and the significance around Chinakali, especially so uh, in that space. So this is a view uh, from the, the Chinakali foreshore. So lots of boats. Uh, so right here at the edge of the Dardanelles, right near where it uh, meets up with the Aegean Sea. And that land you can see in the mist is, is uh, the Gallipoli Peninsula. So it's about a 20 minute ferry ride across. Uh, so a very thin stretch of water. Um, and um, that is kind of part of the, 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 the history of what is there. The Dardanelles, that, that waterway was, was crucially important. Uh, vulnerable, but also very easily protected because of that. So um, that ferry is the ferry that we, uh, uh, the one that we took across when we went over to the peninsula. Um, and just a photo of some fish. On the first day, we walked down the waterfront, and here's this right beside the water. These fish, they were all live, so they were all moving, uh, if that was a video. Uh, and it was, it was just a really interesting thing of, like, where we are. This is a place where the fish come fresh out of the sea. People buy it there on the waterfront uh, and, and consume. What you can't see is just around the edge of there, there were a whole lot of cats sitting around, just waiting for somebody to uh, drop um, a, a, a fish or two. Um, so after we'd uh, taken part in the, in the panel discussion, um, one of the things that we uh, also uh, then did was we spent a morning on Gallipoli. Now Dylan, um, who as I said was developing resources, actually spent a whole day on Gallipoli right before the day that we all went over together. So he sort of spent a day and a half um, this is Adam, who's our guide. Um, he uh, is the uh, chair of the, uh, the Gallipoli uh, Guide Association, and he was a fantastic guide. So Turkish, Turkish speaking, um, great English, and was able to really weave together for us the whole history of the peninsula and what was going on there and what, and what happened. So um, 
here we've got um, a, a couple of uh, things that Dylan's been working on. So uh, part of the reason for, uh, for Dylan being there and part of the outcome of that is the development of, of resources. So over on the uh, left-hand side, this is an online resource that Dylan's been involved in um, developing with the Ministry of Education, which enables uh, school children to go in and actually uh, download resources and information about the First World War uh, and, uh, and what happened. Um, and uh, over on the right, uh, an, an inquiry guide. Uh, and, uh, you know, Friendship and Community is an interesting one in terms of uh, New Zealanders and Australians Anzacs in Gallipoli uh, and what came out of that conflict uh, and the way that we are now greeted there, which is uh, quite remarkable and, and, and quite warm. Um, but it's wonderful that there's very productive, tangible things that are coming out from the, the visit uh, for New Zealand as well. So Gallipoli itself, um, this is a photograph of the, uh, the, the, the main Turkish memorial. And this is right on the headland of, of Gallipoli. Uh, it's about 40 metres high uh, and was built in the 50s. And um, it's a very significant memorial uh, for the Turkish. Basically, all Turkish school children will probably come here at some point during their schooling. Um, it's uh, one of the interesting things for us when we talked to the guides about, or, and Adam about uh, people visiting, only about 10% of uh, the um, uh, people from the Allied side, if you like, who visit the Gallipoli Peninsula actually visit the Turkish memorials, which um, seems to me, uh, having had the experience of going around, to be a, uh, uh, quite sad actually. Um, the, the, the story of the peninsula and the story of what happened. You know, it's very much a Turkish and allied thing, and those two things together really give you an appreciation of what happened there. So it's a very significant memorial. This is where the big Turkish um, commemoration happens, which happens on the 18th of March, because that's the day that the British tried to um, take the Dardanelles and sail up through that very thin piece of water, um, which was also a very silly thing to do, um, because it's a very thin piece of water. It was laced with mines, and it was very well uh, protected by, by guns, um, which you see here is one of them. So this is, this is one of the guns that was used uh, during that. The, um, the, there's very good uh, uh, restoration and preservation of the, uh, the stuff around the, the Gallipoli Peninsula. This is actually uh, speaks to a particular story where um, one of the guns uh, uh, had been hit by shell, and so the loading arm for the for the for the field gun had been damaged, and so a Turkish soldier carried um, three 250 kilogram shells uh, up some stairs and loaded them into the guns, which uh, was a huge feat and ended up with him being regarded as, as a hero. And one of those shells actually hit one of the British ships and sunk it. Um, the, he was asked the next day to, to recreate it so they could take a photo. And this, is, this sculpture is based from the photo that was taken. He couldn't lift the shell the next day. Uh, and uh, they ended up giving him a hollow shell, which he could lift for the, um, for the, the piece. And uh, apparently he remarked, I can't lift the shell, but if we were under attack tomorrow, uh, I would lift it again. Um, so one of those things that's in the, in, the, in, the, in the folklore and history around what happened, but you know, there, was, there, were, there were great feats of heroism on both sides and what was a, a terrible conflict, which actually had a, had a lot of loss. Um, just another one of the, 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 the sculptures from around the peninsula. So the, uh, there's very good Turkish memorials and very good allied memorials. Uh, uh, very much a sense of loss uh, with all of these. Um, yes, there is a commemoration in terms of, uh, you know, the Turks do regard uh, that they, the Gallipoli onslaught, they won that battle and that, that is part of, of their history. But what you get right across the peninsula is a deep sense of loss and, and how, um, how futile it all was and, uh, and, and sadness around that. Um, this is just that, that statue based on that uh, drawing that, we showed, that I showed earlier around the, uh, 
Turkish soldier carrying the Australian uh, across no man's land. Uh, again, a very famous piece, and uh, apparently did actually happen. Um, uh, a gentleman who went on to become the Governor General of Australia actually documented and was there uh, and documented that. So that is a piece that they have in the historical record that they know uh, is not just folklore. Um, lots of dioramas and uh, and um, sculptures and etc. So this is a, a Turkish field hospital. Um, they certainly seek to, to give a uh, reality of what went on. So this is Anzac Cove. Um, so this is the beach and it's tiny. Uh, it's about half the size of Days Bay in Wellington, for those of you who know um, that bay. Um, it really is very small. Obviously it did not have a, a concrete retaining wall and the road that goes through there was not there. But, um, you know, it was a very small piece of land for several thousand Australian and New Zealand soldiers to land at, accidentally, as we know, uh, and to be confronted with uh, quite steep hillsides. And the hills in 1915 were not covered in that much scrub. So they were quite bare. So there was not much cover. So it wasn't like you could get up the beach and then get into the cover and you'd be safe. So it really was a, a, a terrible and a very exposed place to land and a very small uh, place to land, which did leave them very vulnerable. Uh, quite an interesting place to stand and reflect uh, when you know what, what happened there. Um, and they still do find uh, pieces washing up, whether it be uh, um, bullets, pieces of ammunition, bone, uh, that stuff is still being found uh, in, in this area. Uh, it's very, um, preserved. This is Lone Pine, which is where the main Australian um, uh, engagement happened, or one of the big Australian engagements happened, I should probably say. Uh, and this is where the main Australian memorials happened. You can see uh, temporary grandstands on either side there in white, which were being set up for the 25th of April, which was a few weeks after we were there. Um, a, a very famous painting, uh, that's uh, so uh, Ataturk, uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who later went on to be the founding father of the, the modern Turkish nation, uh, led the Turkish uh, campaign. That's him there on the left. Um, there is a photograph that this is painted from. So this is painted from reality. Um, and this is the view down from Chanak Bear. So um, this, the hillside, the, the, the famous uh, uh, piece in time where the uh, Allies held it very briefly and the Turkish put them, pushed them back and really led to the start of the, uh, the end of the Gallipoli campaign. Uh, but a very, very beautiful uh, spot uh, all, and all along the peninsula is, um, as well. These are the trench lines at Chinook Bear. Um, they didn't look quite like this. They didn't have the wood that, that's been put in here in the restoration. Um, but the trenches in this area were as close as eight metres apart. So you had soldiers on both sides, eight metres, who could eyeball each other, basically. And um, uh, obviously, uh, you know, that uh, also led to the ability to throw grenades and things like that. I mean, this area was um, piled high with bodies when, when Chanak Bear happened. Uh, it, it, uh, the, the stench, apparently, was, was terrible. And there were a couple of times during the campaign where... Uh, both sides actually held a ceasefire to uh, clear away and bury the bodies because the bodies were so deep, five, six deep. Um, so, uh, yeah, a, 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 a terrible campaign and um, quite interesting to be there and see that stuff and reflect on that history and, and what that means for us, but also for the Turks. And this is just a memorial at, um, at Chunk Bear. So you'll see the preparations there for the 25th of April. So on the right, that's the Anzac Memorial. On the left, that's the uh, statue of, of, of Ataturk. So the other part uh, of our trip, once we had um, finished in um, uh, the Gallipoli Peninsula and uh, uh, Chinakli area, was um, to go to Ankara, and so, which is where the National Library is, and that's the capital of, of Turkey. So we... Um, we were on this bus around Chinakali, uh, around Gallipoli, sorry. We were on this bus, which there was probably about 40, 50 librarians on there, mainly Turkish, 
uh, and a Palestinian and a Bosnian and a couple of Kiwis. And we went round and then we, they you know, said to us, oh, we're going to take you on the bus and we're going to go to an airport and you'll fly to Ankara. So um, we um, piled on that bus or we're on that bus and we were sort of like, surely they're not going to fly 50 librarians to, to Ankara. That would seem, you know, unusual. Um, and then it became apparent that, yes, they, all those people were from Ankara and so they were coming back with us. Uh, and then we realised about halfway along that the plane we were supposed to be on had been cancelled. Um, and so they were on the phone finding another flight while we were travelling. And so they found a, a flight, which was in this place called Chorlu, which is a small regional town, probably similar to Palmerston North. Um, and so we went to that airport and um, flew up to Ankara. Uh, not before we uh, accidentally turned into a military base and tried to drive into a military base, uh, which uh, is not to be recommended uh, in Turkey. Um, they have security is very high and there was a couple of very young looking lads with machine guns which were almost as big as them who looked uh, very nervous as this bus pulled up uh, and we were looking very nervous in the bus wondering what was about to happen um, but we did get to Ankara and so there were kind of there were there were three parts to our, our trip to Ankara the first was uh, a visit to the embassy so we we arrived and um, we knew that uh, the embassy, New Zealand embassy, had offered to host us. And so we went to, um, to Ankara and uh, went to the embassy and had drinks with the, the ambassador um, and, uh, and his wife. And uh, then we actually hosted at a function that he was involved in that evening, uh, a rotary function, where uh, he was speaking along with the Australian ambassador and a Turkish um, academic. So this is a photo taken from the roof uh, of the uh, the embassy. They've got a lovely uh, big space, a uh, hosting space on the on the roof, and this is the balcony. Fantastic view over Ankara, which is basically a basin. Um, and and uh, that was very nice to have that little piece of New Zealand uh, over there. And um, that was an opportunity for a bit of conversation about how the trip had gone so far. Uh, um, we exchanged um, uh, some gifts with the with the embassy, so we we gave the ambassador a a, a copy of a, a, a new uh, book on Gallipoli coming from New Zealand, um, and the the evening event, which was the Rotary do, was actually really nice. We um, we were seated at different tables, so Dylan and I were seated together at a big round table with some Turks, and um, that meant that you know we were able to have a great conversation with them about what we were doing in Turkey and, and uh, some of the stuff that's pertinent and also listen to a, a great presentation. I mean, our ambassador gave a lovely presentation on basically, you know, why these Anzacs, why these New Zealanders uh, came and uh, were part of a, a, a force that invaded um, uh, um, Turkey and, you know, reflected on that, the, the Englishness and the mother country, and why why this piece happened, and and the Australian ambassador did a, did a, a similar thing. Um, so it was actually a really nice uh, thing to be part of, and and fantastic to spend some time talking with uh, Turkish Rotarians about um, where things were at for them, and 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 their reflections on the relationship between New Zealand uh, and, and and Turkey as well. Um, when we were there, um, so this is Tui Jews, who's the deputy head of mission uh, at the um, the embassy, and uh, we gave uh, them a copy of the, the the Turnbull Library Record, which is the publication we put out every year. Because uh, when we walked in, the first thing she said to us was, "Oh, do you want to see our library?" And then you could almost see her immediately go, "Oh God, why did I say that?" There's a bunch of librarians, um, but this is their library, so it's you know a few shelves, um, uh, and they have some they. Have, great resources uh, there around Turkey and, and New Zealand. Um, one of the things, the great nice things that happened there was the fact that um, they, they had a book on their shelf, which was the second volume of a book, uh, of a two volume set that I'd been given in Chinakli by uh, one of the academics that we were presenting with. So we were able to bring the, the, the two volume set together and that's actually coming back to New Zealand and will be uh, at the National Library. And that's uh, a, a, a two volume set that's been published in, in Turkey, which is letters uh, from um, and diary entries from prisoners of war in Gallipoli, at Gallipoli. 
and uh, they are, so you have the original, and then you have the original uh, in whatever language it was originally uh, uh, actually uh, typed out, so it's uh, often more legible, and then also translated into either Turkish or English, depending on whether the original was Turkish or English. So um, that was that was a nice nice piece, uh, a nice thing to be able to do, because um, I'd walked away from Chinakali wondering if we'd ever get the second volume of this thing. Um, so this is Peter with the Ambassador um, and those presentations that I um, uh, mentioned. Um, so after we had done that, uh, another key part of the visit was to actually the National Library of, of New Zealand meeting with the National Library of Turkey. Um, so this is that meeting. Uh, over on the left hand side are the members of staff from the Turkish Library that we we're speaking with. We're obviously on the right and the gentleman in the uh, front on the right who's, who you can just see is here, he was our translator. So he was translating everything between Turkish and English and vice versa. So that was a really interesting d discussion. Um, most of the people there could not speak English apart from the woman second from the left who was actually a, a university librarian and she had fantastic English and uh, spoke to us uh, directly. Uh, interesting things for us that came out of the visit to the National Library, um, the Turkish have a very uh, aggressive digitization um, uh, scheme in place. Um, so the National Library is looking to digitize three million items in this current year. Um, however, their digital preservation they are only just beginning on. So that you know, there's an interesting conversation there in terms of how we can assist or work with the Turks and, and help them in that area if they want that. Um, another interesting thing was there is a marked divide between public libraries and school libraries. Uh, in fact, one of the presenters there at that table um, talked about the frustration in the public libraries that the school students were using the um, and teachers were using the public libraries like school libraries. So, I mean, that was something interesting for us because, of course, we spent a bit of time talking about how we can co locate and do that sort of stuff and how we can strengthen the ecosystem uh, by school libraries and, and public libraries working together. Um, but they're very much in a different place, uh, or it sounded like they were um, around that as well. Um, and then on the, the final day, uh, Dylan and I took part in a, the, the last of the um, presentations and, and discussions. So we took part in a two hour panel discussion where I regave my presentation from Chinakli and Dylan talked about his work at services to schools. And at the end, we presented to the, uh, the National Library um, some gifts. So on the right are some books from New Zealand, which are about Gallipoli. Uh, and so we presented that. And then on the left um, is, a, is a photograph. Now, there's an interesting story with this photograph. Um, a, a New Zealand soldier picked up a camera uh, at Gallipoli and brought it back to New Zealand. And years later, uh, the film was developed. And when it was developed, it was realized that the photos were um, of Turkish soldiers. So it was a Turkish camera. Uh, and so these photographs and the negatives have been in the, the Turnbull collection for many years. So uh, we um, printed one of these and presented it uh, to the National Library of Turkey. Uh, and so this was very much a repatriation of the photograph, which uh, they had no knowledge of before. Uh, and that was very, very warmly received. Uh, everybody in the audience applauded. Um, when we when we when we handed that over, and that was that was actually a very special moment, uh, and a very special moment in terms of I think the part of the purpose of the trip uh, of uh, of of our countries working together. Um, the president of the Turkish Library Society was there, um, and I had a bit of a chat with them. Um, they are interesting. They've only got two thousand six hundred members. Um, Lianza has about two thousand, I think. Um, at last record, so it's um, for a country of 70 million people, the membership of that library station is quite small. Um, so again, you know, it's, it's a bit of a thing, I guess, about how well we do in terms of uh, involvement, and we still look at ours and think that it could be much better. Um, but uh, they uh, very much, I mean, it's such a large country, they've got, have to have quite strong regional groups. Um, and I didn't get a strong sense of central, um, a central council that kind of was strong in the, in, in the leadership of the association overall. But I think there's more conversation we can uh, potentially have there as well, because they, they were instrumental in, in us being uh, in Turkey as well. 
So then just a few uh, extra slides. Um, you can't have any sort of library presentation without cats. So um, one of the things about Turkey is there are cats everywhere. Uh, and seriously everywhere, in Istanbul in particular, there are cats absolutely everywhere. So I just, I, I, I've got a cat and I do like cats, so I have a bit of a tendency to take photos of them as I walk. So um, just beautiful and well kept too. Not Most of them did not look sort of mangy or unfed. So these cats are kind of obviously part of the infrastructure and are fed uh, by people, um, but they are absolutely everywhere. Uh, in, in uh, Istanbul in particular. Um, another interesting thing that happened for us when we were in Chinakali, we were walking on the waterfront and Chris actually went, that's Harakiki. Uh, and so here on Chinakali, on the waterfront in a big planter is flax from New Zealand. And you know, it's just another one of those symbols of how New Zealand has become part of the story of Chinakali and, and Gallipoli. Um, and very much we are and uh, along with the Australians. And um, uh, you are very warmly welcomed there, uh, which is very interesting considering where that came from. And a lot of, a lot of the fact that we are so warmly welcomed came from uh, Ataturk and uh, his, uh, his things that he did after the war. Um, Troy is very close to Chinakali. Um, I did not know this. For some reason, I thought Troy would have been in Greece, but um, that's uh, my bad classical knowledge considering I studied classics um, at university. So this is the horse that was used in the, uh, the movie that was recently done with um, Brad Pitt. Um, but Troy is just up the road 20 minutes and very much also a part of the story of, the, of Chinakli in that, in that area. And we were lucky enough to, go to, to visit Troy uh, and see the ruins there as well. Um, so just a quick reflection on, on uh, Ataturk. So Mustafa Kemal uh, Ataturk, as I say, I mean, he led the uh, Turkish uh, fight and fight back at Gallipoli and was you know, fundamentally responsible for their victory in that battle. Uh, he went on to lead the Turks in the War of Independence, which happened uh, almost immediately after World War I, uh, and founded the modern Turkish Republic. So this is his mausoleum. Um, so... Uh, the reason I've sort of got that shot there like that is to try and give a sense of that. And that's just a bit above ground. So there's that large area. And then underneath the ground, there is a big museum just dedicated to Ataturk. Uh, there is a, there is a, he's revered and there is a big legend around Ataturk and who he was. Um, this is a man that, you know, led that uh, fight back, found, founded the Republic uh, and modern Turkey. Uh, invented the uh, the Turkish language. Uh, they used uh, Ottoman script before that, uh, which was a language that was designed that everybody could read and write it. Uh, Turkey was one of the country first countries to give the woman the vote. Not, of course, before New Zealand, um, but a very early country for women to get the vote, and that was because he strongly believed. He he did a lot of things and led very strongly, and is uh, very much revered as um, the father. Of, of modern Turkey. Uh, all dignitaries that visit Turkey for the first time are expected to visit this mausoleum and pay their respects. Uh, it's part of the diplomatic protocol that occurs uh, for visits. Um, if I was standing in a room, I'd say, what are these? But um, so these are actually, uh, these are almonds. So amazing food in Turkey. And one of the things that they eat are green almonds. Um, so before they've been dried, um, quite bitter, but actually quite quite tasty. Uh, and dried eggplant is another thing that was around a lot. Um, and I felt compelled to take a photo of, obviously. And finally, Turkish delight. So, um, uh, the Turks do actually eat Turkish delight. It was one of my first questions when I got there of, of um, uh, one of our Turkish hosts was, do you guys actually eat Turkish delight or is this something that you've kind of like constructed and, and sell to the rest of us? But they do. And so you'd walk around and there's these enormous slabs of this Turkish delight with pistachio in it and they'd just carve off pieces for you. Um, and amazingly cheap. I bought a kilo, kilogram of Turkish delight for five New Zealand dollars, uh, which um, was also the best Turkish delight I've ever eaten in my life. Um, 
So, you know, it's just as a final reflection, um, it really uh, was an amazing trip to be, have the opportunity to be involved in. And um, uh, all of us that went, uh, I think, feel very uh, lucky that we had the opportunity, and I certainly feel very lucky as uh, Leanne's a president to have had the opportunity <coughs> to attend that. Um, so that's the end of my sharing. Um, we have just unmuted. So now's an opportunity for anybody who would like to ask any questions or make any comments um, or anything like that. And yes, yummy indeed to the Turkish delight. So anybody who's got a mic on can actually uh, speak. We've unmuted you so we can hear. Um, but also happy to, if you don't have a mic, uh, to um, comment that back and people can do that. So, um, can everybody see this? Okay, all right. I won't yep. repeat what's being typed. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Turkey's, a, I mean, I would go back to Turkey. I would, uh, it was never on my list of places to visit, but having been there and seen thing, I would definitely go back. Uh, uh, and I would, absolutely recommend to anybody who thought that they would find it interesting to, to, to go to Gallipoli. Um, just aside from the Anzac thing, it's a pretty amazing place. And when you take in the whole history of it and the Turkish side as well, you get a real sense of, of exactly what, of how significant it is, what happened there uh, and the lot, the loss was enormous. And, uh, and, and, you know, both how sad that was, but also, you know, Ataturk, after the war, said uh, something along the lines of, the mothers of, of sons who are lying here in our soil don't weep, they are lying in friendly soil amongst friends. And that's the bit that actually started the, the, the fact that Anzacs, New Zealanders, Australians, go to Gallipoli and are warmly welcomed. We put a line in the sand and kind of said, Finish. This is not about the conflict. This is actually about nations coming together now. The bit that kind of really, I suppose, lands really strongly. Um, any other questions or otherwise we will um, let people... Any other questions? Any questions and we'll let people get um, back to their days. I just want to thank you for um, ending the first one. Quick one, Colin. Yes, indeed, Kevin. Um, I was just, uh, did you get to visit any public libraries over there? Um, only one, really, um, which was a small children's library. And um, that, which, which was quite interesting. And actually, the reason that we got to visit that was because um, there was an exhibition being launched there around um, uh, paintings from the war. Um, it was a pretty... Um, on um, schedule in many ways, which meant that, you know, we got to go to the National Library. Uh, and like when we were in Chinakli, we were kind of in sessions all day, apart from the trip over into the peninsula. We actually didn't have a lot of time to go to um, other places. So, um, again, I mean, it would be something that I would be interested to see. One interesting thing that I didn't say is that um, Turkey has one of the largest installations of um, koha in the world. Um, it's used extensively throughout their public life network. And we were thankful for that. <coughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. um, Jenny, um, I, look, a lot of those photos that I showed you there are either my photos or Dylan's photos, and so we would not copyright those at all. So um, I'm pretty sure we'd be quite happy to hear um, quite freely, and we could make those available. Um, I'll go back and talk to the guys uh, back at the, the National Library, because Chris has got photos as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we would be more than happy. I think at the end, so even just using my pictures, um, there we could put together a very nice resource pack, and, and we'll do that. Awesome! Great! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank cool. you. Pleasure. Thanks Pleasure. so much.
Yeah, thanks, cool. Corin. That was awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, no, so, I mean, thank you guys for, for, well, thank you for listening to that. Um, and also thanks <laughs> for um, um, being here for the first of, of these because we are very keen to really get information flowing uh, across uh, the across New Zealand. Uh, so we're not just bound by being able to do it just in one place with, with people physically. So, so yay, you guys. Would, would, would this webinar be um, recorded so, like, the a deputy principal could see it or yep, like, the, get the resource as well? Yep, we've recorded the webinar, so that will be made available. Oh, that'd be great, because uh, she's on a trip at the moment and I think she's really into this, um, you know, the ENZAC, so um, we, we, we were pretty full on with the ENZAC at the health school, so this would be up early. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. We'll we'll make the uh, we'll be able to make the webinar available quite quickly. Yeah, that's great. Would you be able to um, put it somewhere that's, so we can? Uh, would they be emailed or or how would we uh, find out where to view the webinar? Uh, I'll email a link out, and we'll be loading it onto our YouTube channel. Oh, that'd be great. Cool, yeah. So we 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 send that link out on NZ Libs or Yeah, and to all the participants. Yeah. NZ Libs and all the participants. That's lovely. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right, well you guys um, have a great the rest of your day. Bye bye. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Corin. Yeah, thanks, Corin. And we'll certainly promote the next one. So Cheers. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.